Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about how anger is not something that we're obliged to remove totally from our hearts, but we have to control that. And forbearance matters most when a person is angry, not when he's happy. This is why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the great companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that judge a person's forbearance when he's angry and his trustworthiness when he is craving for something. And he was teaching a very important principle here, that when a person is happy and content, there's no point in judging his tolerance, because, that, uh, because in that state, it is easy for a person to be tolerant. What really counts is when a person is tolerant in a state of anger, perhaps when someone has committed an injustice towards him. And we can see an, a similar example uh, in the wisdom for appointing an amir. What is the wisdom? I mean, uh, Gulraz, we've been told in the Prophet ﷺ sunnah that when only three people, if only three people or more go on a journey, they should appoint an amir or a leader. Uh, what is the wisdom behind that? Um, so that if there's any disagreements or any you know, sort of arguments, then the amir is there to give the final decision. Yes. So the amir is there to be objective. That's right. To so be objective, yeah. He does not have to, he can avoid all the arguments, or if there are, you know, certain arguments like going controlling on. controlling people, I think. He so. can be objective and he can say, okay, this is what needs to be done. Okay, but is there any, if somebody says, I always <laughs> obey the Amir when we agree. Mm. I, if I agree with the Amir, that's when I obey him. Is there any virtue in that? <laughs> the whole point no. of the Amir is being there is when there's disagreements. Absolutely, and this is what I wanted to hear. The whole point of the Amir is that he should be there when there is difference of opinion, when there's disagreement among them. Okay, because he should put a stop to it. So there's no virtue, uh, there is no virtue for a person to say that, uh, oh, I am obey the Amir when I agree with him. The real merit, and this is what it matters most, is that a person, he puts aside his own view and then follows the Amir when there is a difference of opinion. And in the same way, uh, the real merit of you know, being tolerant is not when everybody is happy and everybody is uh, you know, jolly jolly. The real merit is when a person is angry, then he begins to tolerate or he begins to, uh, he, he, he puts his forbearance into, into gear. And the causes of anger can be broken down into two primary types. And it's important for us to know the causes so that we can deal with the cures uh, based upon those uh, causes. And so there are two primary types. There's internal types and external types. As for the internal cause, this is what some people have been created with. Some people have been created with a natural tendency to get angry quickly. And the slightest irritation causes their blood to boil. And it's a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has created people with all different strengths and weaknesses. And this is a test for every individual. One person can find it hard to control his anger, but easy, easy to give in charity. Another could find it difficult to be generous, um, but very, you know, he might find it difficult to be generous, but he'll find it very easy to control his anger, and so on and so forth. So everybody's got their own personal weaknesses. So what is required of a person is to work on these weaknesses, such that he at least reaches a level of acceptance in Islam. In other words, that his weaknesses do not cause him to leave an obligation or to fail in doing a, a prohibited uh, matter. Sheikh, the, yes. the companions have this weakness as well of getting angry? Of course, the, the companions had these kind of weaknesses. Uh, in fact, you'll find that some, one of the companions, uh, Usama ibn Zayd, uh, عنه, the Prophet وسلم, uh, was told about one, a, a behavior that he, uh, or an action that he did in one of the battlefields. He was, uh, during the battlefield, a person said, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah." This person was a non-Muslim, and Osama was just about to kill this person. And one could say that it was anger that led him to continue to kill him. Okay, one could say that. However, when he was explaining this to the Prophet ﷺ, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he got angry, and he said, "Why did you uh, do, do this? this?" He replied, "He said because he only said the shahada to save himself." Now, the, and so this is one way of looking at uh, this uh, weakness. Uh, Inshallah, let's have a look at what some of the people uh, outside they had to say about anger. 
Anger is a natural reaction taken by any person when provoked. Frustrated, um, maybe uh, get anger on somebody. Well, uh, he normally uh, makes uh, irresponsible actions and uh, he could swear a lot on people and uh, could make uh, f uh, fights with them. An angry person, he does a lot of things, uh, one of which uh, he slams doors, he throws things in front of him, he puts his anger in into other people like fighting them, um, uh, beating them, and sometimes he goes into wrong ways like smoking weed, um, pot, or those stuff. Very interesting uh, comments there. Uh, we were talking about the different causes of anger, or the two main uh, causes of anger. And we said that they're of two types. Firstly, uh, internal causes. Internal causes when a person is naturally, he naturally feels angry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created different people with different weaknesses. And this person, he has the weakness of getting angry quickly. The slightest of any you know, irritation, blood boils and you know, all these kind of things. The second uh, type of cause is the external causes, on the other hand. And these are based on the environment. A person, he might keep company with uh, people who boast about their anger uh, and their lack of forbearance. And they speak proudly about how they act in accordance with their anger and call this bravery or courage. So when a person keeps company with these types of people, he might eventually begin to glorify this excessive anger and he might think that this is something good. And as the fire of anger gets severer, the person becomes blinded by this anger and he becomes less and less prone to listening to advice about his temper. And if someone tries to advise him, he doesn't listen to him. In fact, this actually enrages him further. Uh, and if his intellect tells him something that he's wrong, then the anger gets the better of him uh, and extinguishes any kind of rationale. And he's overcome with blinded emotion that he must act by. Now, anger affects a person differently. It affects a person's appearance, both on, uh, on his tongue, uh, on his limbs, on his face, uh, and we can see that. So let's have some examples of how uh, anger affects a person, uh, Baha. Uh, I think uh, changing in his face color. Yes, yeah, some people become red, yeah. Yes, and uh, his eyes sometimes get uh, red. Uh huh, yeah. So, uh, and uh, making, um, uh, like breaking something or. Uh, I think uh, that's all in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and for example, he would begin to begin to sweat, you know, you know, saliva will come out of his out of his mouth. Animal kind of characteristic. Yeah, and walking up and down. Walking up and down, you know, doing acting in a way that you wouldn't normally act. And if he was yeah. to look about at this later on, you'll think, you know, he'd be embarrassed. Like, exactly, he'd be embarrassed to say to himself, this way. "Is that really me? He can't believe that that's him." He may begin to become violent. He may tear things. He may stamp, he may, you know, it becomes very, very disgusting. All the animalistic characteristics become apparent in him. And what if the person is not there? Then he he's angry with someone who's... I've seen it with my own eyes. He may even break a window with mm. his bare fist. He may lift up a chair and throw it for the sake of it. I know a person who actually threw his mobile phone out. Very brand new mobile phone. Yeah. You know, very expensive. Got angry, out it went the window. Mm. And he regretted it later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and in fact, the phone didn't belong to him. It, be <laughs> it belonged to somebody else. So he had a big bill at the end of it. Mm. And this is some of the problems of anger, as we can see uh, very clearly. And this is actually just on the limbs. We've spoken about, what about the tongue? I mean, I mean nice. swearing. Oh. Cursing. Cursing, mm. swearing. And all mm. these things are not from the characteristics of a Muslim. Mm. In fact, the Prophet وسلم, said, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al -akhir, فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَسْمُدْ That if whoever believes in Allah and the last day, then let him say good or remain or silent. Remain or remain silent. And yeah. this is not from the characteristic of the Muslim. We can see actually anger also has an internal effect on Even a person. With speech. Even with the speech, uh, sometimes it's not always the bad words. It's sometimes you say things. Yeah, maybe in an aggressive tone. Yeah, or like maybe you say something about a person which may ruin the relationship. Yes, exactly. That's anger. a very, very good point because some people, two people, uh, they may be good friends. A person says something in a state of anger, but it, and he may not even mean what he's saying. But the other person, he's listening to this. He says there's no smoke without fire. He must have meant that. 
And this can actually ruin a person's uh, or relationship with somebody else. Uh, and this actually is just simply uh, all these characteristics of a person, all of these characteristics, whether it's on the face, whether it's on the limbs, whether it's on the tongue, uh, all of this put together, it's just a reflection of what is inside. And what's inside is actually much worse. Uh, things like a person may have hatred in his heart, rancor, malice, jealousy, envy, and all these different characteristics, all of which have been prohibited uh, in some form or fashion in the Sharia of Islam. Inshallah, in the next episode, we will look at some of the uh, ways that we can control uh, blind anger. And we can see some of, the, uh, what, some of the things that a person can do, uh, a person who suffers from this extreme uh, anger. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته